for your jeeps. For you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just like fire. Amen. Shut up in our bones. Amen. If it feel like fire to you, let me see you put your sanctified hands together. Hallelujah. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be changed. My mind says, Lord. My mind says, Lord, never the same. I wanna be free. I wanna be free. I wanna be changed. I wanna be changed. So send your fire, Lord. Your fire, Lord. Your precious flame. So send your fire, Lord. Your fire, Lord. Your precious flame. I wanna be free. I wanna be free. I wanna be changed. I wanna be changed. My mind says, Lord. My mind says, Lord. Be free. I wanna be free. I wanna be changed. I wanna be changed. So send your fire, Lord. Your fire, Lord. Your precious flame. So send your fire, Lord. Your fire, Lord. Your precious flame. Come on, say burn away, burn away everything, everything till you see, till you see that I've been changed. I'll be changed. Burn away. Burn away. Everything. Everything. In your fire. In your fire, Lord. Your precious flame. So in your fire, Lord. In your fire, Lord. Your precious flame. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be changed. I want to be changed. My mind says, Lord, my mind says, Lord, never the same. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be changed. Be changed. So in your fire, Lord. In your fire, Lord, your precious flame. So in your fire, Lord. In your fire, Lord, your precious flame. Burn away. Burn away. Everything till you see, till you see that I've been changed. I've been changed. Burn away, burn away. Everything, everything. So in your fire, in your fire, Lord, your precious flame. So in your fire, Lord, in your fire, Lord, your precious flame. Jeremiah said, it's just like fire. Hallelujah. Shut up in his bones. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name, Lord God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father God. And we reverence you every day, Lord God. Father God, we come before you, Lord God. And we want you to embrace us today, Lord God. To wrap us in your arms, Lord God. Draw us closer to you, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah, God. We bless you, Jesus. Into your arms I'm drawing near again to dwell with you it's my only heart's desire it's my only heart's desire all I can do is fall on my knees cry fill me with fire and purify my heart and purify my heart draw me close closer than before Closer than I've ever been Draw me close Closer than before Closer than I've ever been Into To dwell with you is my only heart's desire. It's my only heart's desire. Ooh. All I can do is fall on my knees and cry fill me with fire and purify my heart and purify my heart draw me close closer than before closer Wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms, wrap me in your arms. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Wrap me in your arms. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you for making me like you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say there's no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And any tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. For we are more than a conqueror through you, Father God, who love us. And we are overcomers by your word and through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm... Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let's make some noise in the house. We're in the house today. Yes, yes, yes. We're in the house today to receive, right? Amen, amen. We did not come, even though we're in this warfare teaching, but we didn't come to show too much of that, right? We came to show a little bit, but not too much of that. Amen. We're going to prioritize God's word, God's ways, God's will. Is that right? Come on, give the Lord a hand and clap of praise for that. Amen. Because there's some things going to go forth today to help us to live right. Amen. Amen. Help us to love our enemies. Is that right? Amen. Amen. That I mean, my God, boy, when you can get that down pat, boy, look at him. You, you're going somewhere. 
Amen. That old neighbor next door just blowing them leaves in your yard. And you take him a meal. <laughs> Is that right? And you know he's in the hospital. And you visit him. Amen. Amen. Or visit her. A big bouquet of flowers. Come on now. Come on now. That's the way. Hey, I'm telling you. I'm telling you how to, I'm telling you how to do it. Amen. That's, that's, that's how to do it. Throw a curve. Sometimes some folks need, need a curve throw. That you, you, you can't keep throwing it a straight ball. Amen. Doing like you used to do. You got to throw a curve sometimes. Amen. Especially when you're behind that slow driver. And you pass. And you're you doing like this. You, you, you're not doing the other thing. With the one finger. You, yeah, hey, how you doing? Come on now. Been there, done that. Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, get the Lord a hand clap of praise just to be here today. Amen. So we're going to go, we're going to go on with this, uh, this service. Amen. We pray that you are enjoying it thus far because we're here for you. What we do is for you. All right. So right now we want to... Uh, uh, this part of the service is about giving. Amen. Come on, give Lord a, a hand clap of praise for that. We're energized. We're ready to give. This is a part of the service also. Amen. We pray that you have made up your mind as relate to what you want to give. Giving your, your, your 10% or above 10% plus. My thing is that I give 10% plus. I, live, I save 10% plus. I live off 80% plus. Amen. Amen. I think that's, that's been a good rule of thumb. It's been working very well in the McNeil's, McNeil's household. All right. All right. So we're going to put some word on our giving, our money. Amen. Because we want it to uh, uh, make some ground. We want, when you plant it, you want it to leave in the spirit and come back in the spirit. Uh, first, uh, second Corinthians uh, nine, and we're going to start at verse six. But this I say, he who he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Listen, every man or woman, according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him or her give, not grudgingly nor of necessity, because our Father, he loves a cheerful giver. And our Father, God, is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that disperses abroad, he giveth, he has given to the poor. His righteousness shall remain forever. Now he or she that ministers seed to uh, the sower, both minister bread for for, for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything, all bountifulness, which causes, which, which causes us to, uh, uh, us through, uh, through thanksgiving to God. For the administration of, of the service not only supplies want of the saints, but is abundant also by means of thanksgiving unto God. We're going to pray, and after we pray, amen, we're going to sow, and I think after that we'll have our speaker. Is that right? I think so. Amen. Are you excited? Are you excited? One more song? All right. Are you excited today? Come on now. Come on. Amen. I, pr I hope you are excited today. Amen. 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 So let's pray. Father, we come to thank you, God. God, we bless you. We, we, it's so, it's a delight to be here today. It, it is a delight to be a part of what you are doing, God, for you're our Father, and Father always knows best. So we thank you today, God, for just the, the, having thanksgiving in our heart that we are here today. We're able to uh, walk, we see, all our, we're, we're well in Jesus' name. So we want to bless you for that. We thank you, God, for the time to, uh, as the, 
the one come to minister your word today that we are open to receive and we are open to make change. But we thank you that the gifts go forth, that the gospel can be preached and we can grow up in you. So we bless you, God, and we thank you today for the opportunity that we can sow into the kingdom. For we are kingdom people desiring kingdom results to be seen in our lives, first in our home and to be spread abroad. So we bless you and we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And everybody say, amen. All right, all right. How's everybody doing this morning? We're doing great. You excited? All right, all right. Mr. Teresa got me out, out of there. Said, "Hey, you need to get up there and get that done." So I'm just, I'm just messing with you right now. But no, we're gonna do the responsive reading uh, this morning. All right, we're gonna do uh, Matthew chapter four. All right, we're gonna try and come out of the King James version. I got it pulled up on my phone here. All right. We're going to do it from the King James Version, the response of reading today. All right, Matthew chapter 4. All right, when you find it, when you stand to your feet, we're going to go to verses 1 through 11. If you own that, say, Coach, I got it. If you don't have it, say, Coach, wait on me. I'll wait on you now. Ain't no point of rushing. You see what I'm saying? Me in the back, they'll say, some people say, say amen, and somebody still ain't said amen, yet they done went on, they got started. See, I'm going to wait on you. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. Since we've been thinking about the, the, the warfare, all right, the battles that we, uh, that we go through. Listen, look, look at this battle that Jesus went through. You know, he went through a battle right here, and he was able to overcome that battle in this situation right here. All right. Now, when you overcome one battle, guess what? There's another battle going to get ready to come back around you, around your way. All right. But here's him in action right here. All right. Here's him on film right here. We can get a picture of this right here. All right. So we're going to start at verse one and go to 11. I'll start with one. You guys do two. I'll do three. We'll go volley back and forth until we get down to 11 and we'll read 11 together. All right. So it says here in verse number one in chapter four of Matthew, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. All right. Three. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, he trying him right here. Okay. Command that these stones be made bread. Mm-hmm. See, Jesus used that word on him right there. All right. He tried him, and then he used the word. All right. Verse 5 says, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sitteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. Trying him again. 
He just drew a line in the sand like the man, like the man did open on Andy Griffin. He said, hey, you so bad, you said you're supposed to jump off this pinnacle and the angel's going to come save you. And again, Jesus used the word. Jesus said unto him, it is written, they go to word again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Wow. He the star football player. He just showed them all the girls. He just showed them all the popularity. He just showed them all this right here. Trying them again. Verse 9, he says, And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Everybody together. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Boy, that Jesus is a bad man, boy. He's a bad, bad man. He, so he, just let's think about those things there that we go and get the experience. He didn't go around making bread. He let the father deal with his, with his, with his problem. He is in battle. He kept using the word and what God said. So that's what we can do as well. Just use the word and what God says about us and not what somebody else may say about us. All right. Thank you. Then come up here and preach half of what I was going to teach about. Because I was, I don't know, y'all know I'm a note. Well, anybody that does the Wednesday exhortation knows I'm a note person. So these, these notes is in color. These are the words, exact, same exact words Coach just spoke. Just the same exact words. He probably looked at my notes. Probably did. Praise God. How y'all doing today? Bless God. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, blessed to be here, blessed to have my family here, blessed to be in the house of the Lord, with the use of my hands, my mind. We all probably have a testimony at one point or another where we shouldn't be here, shouldn't be able to walk in here, shouldn't be able to talk, shouldn't be able to hear, but, but God, amen, amen. Just want to open up in a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day, Lord God, for this is the day that you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. Father God, I pray that the words of my mouth, Lord God, and the meditations of my heart, Lord God, will be satisfying and pleasing to your ears, Lord God, and it will go forth and it will touch the hearts of those that need to hear it to encourage them, to enlighten them, and to exhort them and to push them, Lord God, to go higher in your name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that you are so rightfully due, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we've been teaching on um, spiritual warfare. And my, my assignment is the helmet of salvation. And we want to start back um, to Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Um, his letter was to encourage the, the Ephesians to stand strong, to stand strong in the Lord and in the in the. I'm getting confused right off the bat. The enemy is a liar. Yes, he is. To stand strong in the Lord. And the reason, we want to go back to get an understanding as to why was Paul telling the church at Ephesus this, is that in Ephesus was a, a temple, the temple of Artemis, who was a goddess. And there was a lot of pagan worship there and idolatry there. So as Paul went there and ministered and people became, you know, became followers of Christ as they come out of the church when he was getting ready to leave. He was telling them this, you're going to face some things as you come, as you walk this walk. You're going to face some things. There's going to be some challenges. But what he's telling them is a lot of the things that you've gone through, 
that you've been living, the, the very lifestyle that you've had is going to come back, and it's going to try to work its way into your life. And how many of you know, how many of you are saved? Good chance. So how many know when you first got saved, the enemy immediately started bringing those things back to you just to see if he could, you know, sway you to come back to that direction or, you know, entice you that that lifestyle or that way you were living was right and you enjoy that more than the Christian lifestyle. So we, we look back and see the things that have already been covered. We'll cover where Pastor Sharon Boat about spoke about having your loins being girt about with truth. Eight, John 8, 32 in the King James Version says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. In the Amplified Version, it says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So what was John talking about when he was saying that the truth would set you free? What, was, what is it going to set you free from? It was going to set you free from the penalty of sin. And what is that penalty? What is the penalty of sin? Is spiritual separation and death from God. Spiritual death and separation from God. So I read somewhere where the word truth can be explained as that which is consistent with the mind, the will, the character, the glory, and the being of God. I'm going to say that again. Um, the truth can be explained as that which is consistent with the mind, the will, the character, the glory and the being of God. Amen. God, the life, the, the truth that we're supposed to live should be a reflection of God and God's word. Um, there are, the word also says that you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. So how do we know the truth? Where did the truth come from? The truth comes from the word of God. It comes in knowing the word of God and having the word of God hid in our heart that we might not sin against him. And just as I said, Coach had already touched. To me, I love to see God orchestrate things and how he incorporates things. And um, for a coach to already have touched base or to use the exact same scripture that I was starting out with, it was like God giving me a little say, you got this. See, I set it up for you. You know, God will set you up good. He'll set you up good. He'll make it easy for you. He'll make it comfortable so that all them things that the enemy tries to come at you fear, doubt, inadequacy he'll give you that little oomph that little push to let you know everything that i that you need to do i've prepared you to do you know so i thank god for that um we want to start speaking first as we were talking about where um pastor sharon spoke on being girt about the the truth as minister anthony said and matthew is talking about that when jesus was led by the Spirit of God to go into the, to the desert for 40 days and fast. And when he came out of those 40 days, it said he was hungered. Now, I can barely make it through 40 minutes. You know what I'm saying? A day, two days, but 40 days. So you can imagine after those 40 days, because Jesus was flesh like us. So you can imagine after those 40 days that he'd come out of the desert, and the first thing he, he was confronted First, you would have thought his spirit man was built up. You know, he had then brought his flesh under submission. And so he was, you know, spiritually he was strong, but his flesh was what? His flesh was weak because he was what? He was hungry. So as soon as the enemy, you know, come in like, <laughs> the enemy will come in like a flood. When he thinks that you're highest, where, he, where he, you got it in your mind that I'm so strong in the Lord right now, can't nothing touch me. That's when the enemy is going to come attack you. And it's when you're at your weakest point that he thinks you're capable of taking down. That's when he's going to come at you. So it said, um, Satan spoke to Jesus and said, If you be the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. Now, do you think Jesus, when he said that, did he even cross Jesus' mind that I could do that? Just like the scripture says when he was on the cross, he could have called 10,000 angels to come down. He could have been delivered off the cross, but he chose to stay there. He could have chose to do that. He could have showed the power that he had. But like he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So then Satan took him to Jerusalem and to the highest point of the temple. And he told him, if you be the son of God, now see, Jesus responded to him first about the bread. He said, it is written. 
He said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Satan got slick on the second part. He got slick on the second part because he will take the word and intertwine it with something, throw it in there with a couple of other things. You know, you got people to come and do with the so forth and the as ifs and wherefore by and therefores, and you'll get enticed by those words and the grunts sometimes. The grunts are good sometimes. I'm just not a grunter. But um, he turned around and said, just like, just, like God, um, just like Jesus told him and said, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So Satan turned around and said, for it is written. So he already said, well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to try to tell you something God's word says, what God says. He says, for it is written, he will command his angels. <laughs> he will command his angels concerning you to serve, care for, protect, and watch over you. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now, that right there, Satan told him, for it is written, this is what God said. But then what did Jesus respond and say? Jesus said, on the other hand, it is written. You're right, Satan. It is written. And it forever remains written. It will always be because God's word is. It was, it is, and it always will be. It is written. You shall not test the Lord your God. <laughs> That's just how Satan came at him, though. Like I said, he'll come and he'll use the very words that Jesus used to him. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So then he thought, well, I'll take some of your own words and throw them at you. you how many of you know you have some people that will come back and repeat things that you've said, but they'll use them in a way to condemn you? They'll use them in a way to break you down, to make you feel a certain way. Or you'll hear them saying them, and you'll think, well, I just said that. But that's not the way I meant it. You know, the enemy will take your words and twist them, because he's a deceiver, he's a liar, and he can't speak the truth. He can give you a resemblance of the truth, but he can't speak the truth in itself. Hallelujah. And then again, the devil took him on a very high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory, the splendor, the magnificence, and the excellence of them. And he said, all these things, all these things I will give you if you fall down and you worship me. Now, that right there was, an, was a lie from the very beginning. Because in Psalms it says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So how can the devil give you anything that belongs to God? Again, I say it, it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. Satan has no ability to give you what belongs to God. So when Jesus said, so when Satan said that to him, Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written and forever remains written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And sometimes in our lives as we walk this Christian walk, a lot of times we pray. You know, we pray and we trust and we faith, but sometimes you have to speak directly to the devil. You have to speak directly to the devil and his imps. And put them in their place and let them know the authority that you have. The, the authority that you have in God's word. The next, part, um, the next part that we spoke on was the breastplate of righteousness. That's what Mama Linda, <laughs> Mama Linda, Minister Mama Linda spoke on. Um, the actual breastplate, breastplate was to use to protect the heart. Proverbs 24, four, excuse me, Proverbs 4.23 says above all, Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So anything that you do in life is a reflection of the condition of your heart. If you're out doing good and, you know, you're loving God and you, you're, the fruits of the Spirit that you're bearing are good fruits, you have a pure heart, you have a good heart. But saying that on the other side, if you're out to be malicious, if you're out to do evil, if you're out wishing bad on people, that also speaks what is the condition of your heart. What is the condition that your heart is in? So we ask, what does it mean to be righteous? It means to obey God's commandments and live in a way that is honorable to him. Psalms 106.3 says, How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. How is it that we can put on the breastplate of righteousness? 
We do that by knowing God's word and applying it to our lives so that when those trials and those temptations come, that we can respond to them in a way that is pleasing to God. I can honestly say myself that there was times that I went out, I can say half-dressed. I went out and I responded in situations that may have happened that wasn't pleasing to God. The, by the way I responded verbally or the way I responded physically or, you know, sometimes, you, you ever heard that saying, if looks could kill? Sometimes you don't even have to utter words. Just the, the look, the look on your face. I pick at my husband a lot and tell him, I thank God for my husband being here today. Uh, <laughs> and my grandkids, thank God. But I speak in here, I tell him sometimes, y'all know I like to talk. So if, we, so if we get into a disagreement, well, really, most of the time, it's if I get into a disagreement with him, I'm the talker. I want that, you know, I want that back and forth. And the worst thing he can give me is that right there, what he's doing. Just sit there and just not say nothing. I tell him that says thousands of words to me because I put all my own words to what he's thinking. Because, of course, I'm, I'm his wife. I know what he's thinking, right? I know what he's, yeah, I know, I know. No, we don't. That's, that's the trick of the enemy right there. Because a lot of the times when things are not said, when things are not said, we start putting our own words to things. A situation may not even be as half as bad as it, is, that it actually is. But because we go and allow the enemy and entertain the enemy and entertain those thoughts of what we think that person may be thinking or what that person, I know, you know, I, I had started saying, started trying to correct myself when I say things like, I know she, I said, you know what, no, I can't say that because I don't know. So I've really been trying to make a conscious effort whenever I say things like that to say, you know what, I'm sorry. No, I don't. I cannot say that about this person or that person. I can't say she would have said this or she would have responded that way because I don't. And to do so is to think I have some extra power or I've got some kind of prophetic abilities that I know. And um, I can't read Stacy's mind. I can't read Tracy's mind. I can't read Pastor Jesse's mind. So for me to take that and to think that I can put my, what I think he's saying, and to, and to draw a whole dynamic from it is wrong. That's, I, I like to say that's an insult to God because that's saying that I know greater than what God knows, and I don't know that. Then Coach Troutman. Coach Troutman spoke on having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And what does it mean to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel? It's saying that we're always ready ready to share God's word with anyone in, in any situation at all times. As Christians, as Christians, we should always be prepared as we know when an opportunity arises that we may be able to share the good news of the gospel with someone. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, to study, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> And I say it, um, like Coach said it, I love this, I've loved this. I've said it many times since he said it. Coach said he tells his players to what? To stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And that's how we have to do with the word, with the gospel. We have to have that word hidden in our heart that we won't sin against God. We have to have that word hidden in our heart and, and be meditating on it daily that when those times come, when we do come out of a 40-day fast, and the enemy says, if you're hungry, turn them, turn, them, turn them stones to bread. We can say, it is written. We can speak to the enemy in those situations, say, it is written that God's word said that we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then last week, Pastor Jesse spoke on the shield of faith. Now, our faith can guard us during times of trials in the same way a shield could in battle. For example, when the enemy tries to creep in and our beliefs are questioned, our faith um, in Christ is questioned, then it's those words, it's that faith that we walk, that we walk by that's going to sustain us. It's not in the situation that may be happening at that time, but it's that faith that has gotten us through other times that we've gone through those trials, through those tribulations that have gotten us through. Faith, what is it, says, 
faith is the evidence. We have, well, let me read what Hebrews 11.1 1, it says. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Verse 6 stresses the importance of faith. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Satan's attacks can sometimes cause us to doubt God, but our faith is what prompts us to believe, to believe God. And that's when we have to, you know, know God's word. Testimonies. When we're, you know, the importance of testimonies is when we go through things in our life and we're at our lowest point and we think we just can't come through this, through this time, through this, you know, through this challenge that I'm going through, I can think back and think about when Sister Brenda came through breast cancer, how she overcame and how she was a conqueror, how she, we didn't even know Brent, Sister Brenda was sick. We didn't even know she was going through anything. All we knew, we saw her, and then we knew about the testimony. You know, she shared it with the ones that she needed to share it with that believed and had the lack of faith with her. That was going to be encouragement and then not the go behind her back. Whoa, poor, poor. No, no. You got to have people that's on your side that sees, they see the outcome. When I was, was, I was on drugs, when people found out about it automatically, everybody questioned everything about me. The sincerity of if I said I had to go somewhere, I was lying. If I said I was coming in from somewhere, I was lying. If I needed something for a certain purpose, I was lying. And that was because the life I had lived, what I had, what I had gone through, I had cast doubt. I had lived that. That's, I had lived that life in front of them. So I myself set that doubt in front of them to believe whatever I did was couldn't be true. But yet, whenever I got delivered, and people started seeing that, what she says, because sometimes you'll come out of a life, and you may have to. You have to live a certain way in front of people. You have to carry yourself a certain way, because the enemy will use your old lifestyle to bring other people down, to discourage them, to hold them bound. And you, you want to be able to live up to what your testimony says. We walk by faith and not by sight. So even though at the time when I first started out, other people were saying, you know what we say about a lot of people when they first get off drugs, it's just a matter of time. But this April 14th, I just celebrated 12 years of being clean. 12 years. 12 years that I can speak out of my own, out of my own testimony and speak of. And now we're going to get to what my part of the assignment is, which is the helmet of salvation. For Christians to receive, this, to receive salvation, it means to be delivered from sins and harmful consequences that come along with them. So you say, what is the consequence of sin? Isaiah 59.2 says that your sins have separated you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you, and he will not hear from you. The only thing that will bring you in right standing with God is salvation. So how is it that we can receive salvation? The word says that if we confess our sins and believe God's word, in John 5, 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. Salvation is not something that we can work toward. Rather, it is a free gift. And if we believe in God and we confess with our mouths, it is something that you have instantaneously. Once you have confessed God is in your heart, you are a Christian. You are saved. And those benefits that come with salvation are given to you instantaneously. It's not, you are, you know, at the beginning you're given grace. You're given mercy. You're given favor. All of those benefits that come. How many of y'all have ever gone on a job and you, you know, you started the job and usually during the first week of orientation they tell you what? They tell you about your benefits and what the job is, you know, is going to come, you know, what all. Has anyone ever gotten a job and said, you know, after the first week of orientation, say, I understand there's some benefits with this job, free health care, 401K, profit sharing, Paid time off. <laughs> Paid time off. But I don't want those. No. I appreciate you offering them. I appreciate it. But I believe I just come here and I work. I just want to work. And I just want to work till I retire. And that's all I'm really, that's all. No. No, I don't believe anybody has ever said that. I want everything. 
I want everything they want to give me free. And I want everything that I can get at a discount price. So any benefit that God has for me, I want. I want grace. I want mercy. I want favor. I want forgiveness. I want healing. I want deliverance. I want restoration. I want all of these things. Right? Those are all gifts. Those are all, you know, the fruits of the Spirit. Those are all things that I want to be evident in my life. And as people, you know, people will look at you sometimes and, you ever just seen favor on people? Like, you just don't know. They don't even have to try, Pastor Jesse. They don't even try. It just looks like favor follows them. You know, you go, I, I can speak just on, on my own life. Just on my own life. The one thing that I really prayed and I was trusting and believing God for once I got clean was for restoration. I wanted the deliverance. You promised it to me. I got it. I wanted, but the enemy was telling me, you messed all that stuff up. You messed up all that money. You messed up all your, you know, the opinions of people have. You messed up your character. You messed up things. But God, but God, and the favor of God on my life, God spoke over my life and said, I'm not only going to deliver you, but I'm going to keep you. Okay? Then he said, I, I'm going to go even a step better than I'm not just going to keep you but I'm going to restore you. And you know, God can show out. He can really show out. He didn't just restore me back to where I was. He put a little song, extra, extra on it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we walk in favor. We have, me and my husband sometimes, and we, we just, we are always talking about the goodness of God and just how God has blessed us. And sometimes we'll say, we remember those times when he's got, who all has one of them big old Zephyr Hills water bottles? And puts change in it. You know, <laughs> we got one. Well, there was times that we've had to tip that, you know, tip it over a couple of times to get money for things. You know, we've had to, you know, I, <laughs> I won't tell you some of my, my secrets. But there's been times that we've had to count pennies. There's been times that we've had to. <laughs> now we can go fill up. Now filling up your vehicle is not, <laughs> it's not cheap. But w there was times that we had to put enough to get to work and get back or enough to catch me till payday but we was talking saying we don't remember the time that we had to sit and count pennies or pull a change together or borrow from somebody you know what i'm saying and that's why the word of god my husband is always saying it's better to give than to receive and that's why a lot of times you see me y'all know i love to beg i love to beg and help people because just as it says in Proverbs, when you give to the poor, you lend to God, and he is the one that's going to repay you. And trust me, the interest that God pays you back with, it doesn't mean, I don't care what the most high-standing bank in America is. I don't care about crypto. I don't care about stock. All I know is that when you give unto God and you expect a, re a, a, in a recovery, an income back, a return, is, sorry, that was the word I was looking for, a return back, He's going to give you what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you, not only that you can ask, but you can think. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you consistently have to keep your mind on Christ. Meditate on the Word of God. Because when the enemy, you may see something, but the enemy will always creep in. And he'll take the very blessing that's before you and let you think, this is too good to be true. But there is nothing when it comes to God, that is too good to be true, to be good. Excuse me, it's too good to be true. Hallelujah. Let me get back to my notes. <laughs> I always tell them, say, it's when I stray from my notes that I feel most led by God. That once I start feeling constrained and, you know, stuck here. But some of the ways that the enemy attacks us in our mind is doubt. He'll give you those feelings, like I said, that you're not adequate to do what God has called you to do. He exercises his, power, his little authority, his little power, like he's greater to God. That he can tell God, God didn't know any better than calling you because you can't do that. That's a lie. That's a lie. I don't care what your past is consistent of. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what your childhood brought you through. If God calls you, he'll prepare you. He'll fill you. He'll complete your assignment if you put your trust in him. Yeah. But you have to walk. In faith, you have to walk in faith believing that, that what he did call me, I can do. 
There's times I have, uh, you know, I, I even, when I seen Pastor Kevin send the message out, and he didn't send a message out like asking um, if y'all don't mind. Like he didn't do it separately. He sent like a group text, and he was telling us what we were going to speak on, and is this date okay with y'all? And we were like, you know, so I'm waiting to see, is anybody else going to say, no, nah, I don't really think so. I was like, you know what, ain't no, I was like, I give him the thumb, who knows the emoji, the thumbs up emoji, the thumbs up emoji. And so from there, I was like, you know what, God, I'll do my part, which is studying, showing myself approved, and he'll do the rest. And that's been my prayer from the other day, that he would just prepare the hearts for the ones that came here, the ones that may hear over, you know, the live stream, that whatever the words is, they may need to hear. I don't have the eloquent speech, you know. I don't have like Moses say. Moses didn't think he could do his job because he couldn't speak well. He was, I think the weather said he had a stutter. I don't have a stutter, but I have a wandering mind. So it's like I can say a word and lead me 20 directions. But I knew and I trusted God. I had faith that if I studied and showed myself or proved that God would honor that. And the ones that needed to hear the word that needed it at that point would hear it. It would benefit all because the word of God never <laughs> is never going to disappoint you. There's life in the word of God, but sometimes there's a word that is for a specific person. And I pray that God, if that one person be here and, or hears this message and it, and it encourages them to, move, to push on, to see that something in my life, it, you know, if it happened to Wynette, then it can happen to me because God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for me, he can do for you. What he's done for Pastor Jesse, Pastor Brenda, he can do for you. What he's done for Pastor Pickett, what he's done for T.D. Jakes, what he's done for Creflo Dollar. It doesn't matter who the shell of the person is, the heart of that person, the willingness, the faith of that person to walk out and trust and believe God. Another way that the enemy can come to you is fear. Fear of come at you, fear of inadequacy. Fear of getting up in front of people and talking. You know, when I'm cutting up, I can ask, I can talk. Ain't that right, Sister Teresa? I can talk with the best of them when I'm just running my mouth. <laughs> She's cutting her eyes up at me. I can, I can talk. I never had a problem talking. But when I get serious, oh, that's a whole other person now, you know. And that's what the enemy say. The enemy, you know, if you can run your mouth for God, and you run your mouth for whatever purposes that you're running your mouth. Guys, so you can get up and run it for me. I can give you the words to speak. I can anoint the words that you can say. I can give you the words that you need to speak to the group of people. Because you can't use every word for every group of people. Have you ever been in a, in, a, in a situation where you've listened to somebody and you felt like you should have a dictionary? That some of the words they say, you just look at each other and be like, I'm going to look this up real quick. Because I want to know. I want to know what they're saying. I want to have an understanding. So I'm going to go, hey, Siri. You know, I want to find out. She's already ready to. You know, I want to have a good understanding as to what they're saying. So Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. With, my right, with the righteousness of my right hand. Another scripture verse says, um, and this is I constantly meditate on, is Isaiah 26, 3. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts him. When I got clean, I went through a severe depression, a severe, severe depression, and it was the only thing I, I spent the majority of my time thinking about was wanting to die. Or kill myself. That's the only thing I had lost all self worth. Now this, just like how Jesus just came out of the forty day fast. Now I just got off a three year addiction to crack cocaine, and overnight I was delivered. I went into the hospital on the the fourteenth, and on the fifteenth I never used again. I never looked back. I've never used. So, this is coming from the same person. Like I was saying, the enemy will wait where you think I'm up here. Just got delivered off crack cocaine. I've had people ask me, that's one of the most addicting things you can be on. How did you just get delivered? But God, but God, grace and mercy. That I had sowed in prior to that. God's grace, God's mercy keeping me. 
You know that song says, God kept me. Even in the midst of what I put myself through, God kept me. When the prodigal son was out there eating out of pig trough, God kept him. God kept him till he come back home, and God kept me till I come back home. So it's like when I, I couldn't, you know, I was thinking, you know, then he telling you, you think you've done so much because you, you, you're not using drugs? You know, just like you did Jesus when Jesus came out of the past. I should have been high. It shouldn't have been anything. You couldn't have told me after coming off of addiction. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing you should have been able to tell me. But immediately, I started suffering from depression. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. All those things, when you're in addiction and, you know, as you're going through recovery, they'll tell you when you're weakest is when you're going to use. When you're hungry, when you're angry, when you're frustrated, when things aren't going your way, it's those areas that you're more abused. And people will see that in you before you ever see it in yourself. So as I got clean and I was, you know, thinking, I was putting so much effort into thinking what I had proved, depression started to set in. You know, the depression, the self, low self-worth, low self-esteem, all those things. Now, all I really needed to do was go back and focus on what you did for three years and look where you're at now. But the enemy had completely distorted it like I couldn't even remember. My mom would call me on my phone, and, and she would stay on the phone. I'll, even if we didn't talk, she had, she felt like she had to be on the phone with me just to know I was okay because I talked about wanting to die so much. So she, she's in Alabama now, mind you, but she just felt like if she was going to leave and go to town, she would get off her landline and tell me, now I'm going to call you because she was 10 miles out of town, so she didn't have good cell service. So I'm going to call you when I get in town and I get a service. If you need me before then, keep trying to call me. Maybe the phone will pick up before then. But that was her concern she was having. And when I finally, you know, got to a point where I sought medical help for my condition. Because let me tell you, there is depression and oppression from the enemy, but there are also med medical reasons to be depressed. There are also things that you'll go through in your life, genetics, heredity, that you will suffer from depression. So don't allow the enemy sit there and allow you to be stuck up and not seek the help that you need out of pride, out of thinking, if I go somewhere and ask for some help. I was up in there, and I was like, all I want to do is die. I, 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 every opportunity that I can sit with my mind and reason, I want to die. You know, I had my husband supporting me. I was going to NA meetings, and I didn't even like NA, but I was constantly trying to go around programs and groups of people that I knew was going to keep me encouraged, you know. And it was someone at an EMA, NA meeting one day that told me, because I was telling her I'm so suicidal, I just want to die. I just, you know, and she was like, now this is the NA, she's got years behind her. You need to go to the hospital, you know. Who thought it was so easy, you know what I'm saying? Because who knows, God can use medical pro professionals. Okay, so when I went in, now mind you, when I went in, because I Baker acted myself when I went for, um, for drug addiction. I went in the night that I was, I had tried to kill myself that night, and, but God. I tell people that testimony is that night I heard the Lord speak to me and say, this is not the time, and this is not the place. And I got in, the, and, and, well, I was already in my car, and I drove to the hospital. But when I told him that night, that was my situation. I, with the drug addiction, when I went to the hospital, I stayed overnight. They let me go the next day. So automatically, first thing the enemy was trying to tell me was, your husband's going to think you left here on your own. Because who's going to, you're going to go in there and tell him that you have a drug addiction and you're suicidal, and they're going to say, okay, we're going to let you go the next day. But they did. And from there, like I say, I never looked back. Yet when I went in for depression... And the suicidal tendencies I was having, you know, they came, I think it was like six days. And the only thing I just kept asking nurses, other patients, am I going to get through this? Am I going to make it? Is my mind going to be, am I going to have, you know, I remembered how goofy I was and how much, you know, I was always loud. And, but I, I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to bathe. I didn't want to do nothing. I wanted, you know, when I was asleep, I wanted to stay awake. When I was awake, I wanted to sleep. Cry, cry, cry continuously. And, and when I was in, you know, the scripture, like I said, I don't even remember prior 
hearing it and didn't know where it was where it was from but the holy spirit just spoke to me and said he will keep in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because you trust him and that's all i could for every every situation that i had every problem that i had I would just say he will keep in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. And sometimes you might not be able to, to recite two or three psalms. You might not be able to cite, recite Proverbs or all the scriptures that the great you know, evangelists know to tell you. But sometimes you can just say, God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. And you put on the helmet of salvation and you start guarding your mind against those thoughts. And when the enemy comes at you with these thoughts and he comes at you and you have to, like I said, you have to know the word of God and, and use the word of God against him. You have to stand strong in knowing in what you believe and confessing those, those words, those words that you know. He will keep me in perfect peace because my mind has stayed on him. I am, I, I am the righteousness of God. I am a child of the Most High God. I can do anything. Anything that fear has told me that you can't do, that you're inadequate of doing, I am a child of God. Jesus died on the cross for me. And as we came, as we were coming out from Southeastern, and we used to go before, you know, go out into the streets at the bottom and everywhere and tell people about Jesus and witness to, to people, we used to tell them the, this one little quote saying, if you were the only person... If you were the only person that was out living a sinful life, Jesus would have still died on the cross just for you. He loved you just that much. He loved Stacy just that much. He loved O. Oh, he loves Kim. He loves Tuesday. He loves Quanika. He loves Tracy. He loves y'all, you know, with an unending love. With un the love. There is no love that can compare to the love of God. And even though man will try to taint your name, He'll try to taint your capabilities. He'll try to taint your, even your testimony. When God has called you and ordained you, and there is nothing that the enemy, as long as you keep your faith in God, you keep your mind renewed, you stay in the word of God, you speak those things that are not that as though they were, you put works to your faith and you walk it out. Because we know, you know, like I say, the things, you can have all the faith, but what is faith without works? And that was some of the things that I looked for. When I started going through my depression and working my way through it and getting back to the old Wynette, you know, I went and sought the help of physicians. I went and sought the help of where they tell me, well, you know, in your chemical, your chemical, um, brain, um, your chemical put together, I can't think of the word it is that they call, yeah, that you have a chemical imbalance or you have this issue or you have that issue. I'm not ashamed to say, I pick at my kids and say, I take five pills, it's one for each one of y'all. It's one for each one of y'all. So whatever the cause may be. It's not that I take private. It's the thing that I care enough about myself. It doesn't have me. I'm, I'm the most joyful, you know, happy, at peace person. Even when trials come along, it just seems like God has given me the ability just to find peace in the midst of it. You know? situations coming up when um, Pastor Kevin told me, so we're going to leave this morning. I went right to the back page of my notes and say, but I got this part that says I'm going to ask Pastor Kevin to come up and close out. So I was like, but you know what? We are good. We good. We good because all things, all things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And I've got Pastor Jesse here. So when I get ready to close, I'm going to say, well, this time we'll have Pastor Jesse come up and close out. So... It's not a thing. It's not an issue. We allow the enemy to make little molehills, mountains. But then what does the word say about the mountain? That you have the power, that you have the authority with faith to speak to a mountain and tell it to do what? Yeah, so it's like you don't even have to exert your physical strength. You just speak it. Just speak it. Praise God. You are that. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said in 10.10 10, that the thief comes in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, who we know, you know, we see those TikToks, and it talks about a plot twist, right? A plot twist. The enemy, the, John 10.10 10 said the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Then the plot twist says, but Jesus said that I come that you may have life, 
where the way it amplified says that you may have life and enjoy life to the fullest, have it in abundance to it overflows. And that's what God wants you to have. God wants you to have a good life. God wants you to live a life that is pleasing to him. And in return, he's going to bless you with those things, rewards for your, bless, for your goodness, for walking upright. Sometimes just because of grace and mercy, God will bless you out of things that we know we don't really deserve. But God, it's his grace and his mercy that has allowed us to see those things. John, um, 3 John 2, 2 says, Beloved, I pray that in every way you succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul will prosper spiritually. Don't listen or entertain the enemy when it comes to your mind. Bring those thoughts under submission and renew your mind and stay in God's words. Who has ever seen, um, there's a movie called Saving Private Ryan. Has anyone ever seen that movie? The movie's about four brothers that go off to war. Three of those brothers get killed. And so the Department of War sends out some soldiers to a unit to find this last soldier who was Private Ryan to have him sent home. Because that's what the policy is. If, you know, if, if the, all the siblings did that, last sole surviving sibling is um, to be sent home. So it shows where this, this, um, these group of soldiers have gone out looking for him, and they're in a bunker. And as they ease up to look at a bunker, um, one of the soldiers' bullet, uh, their helmet is penetrated with a bullet, right? And, you know, just out of shock that it happened, he took the helmet off to look at it because he was just amazed. And immediately as he took that helmet off, he got shot in the head and died. Just that little bit of time that he took his helmet off, the enemy creeped in and took his life. And that's how we as Christians with the helmet of salvation, we can't afford to take it off. We have to sleep in it, eat with it, bathe in it, whatever we do. We have to always make sure that our mind is stayed on him, that we're bringing those thoughts under submission, that no matter what the enemy comes to us, comes at us with, that we're already, we always have a word ready to counteract, to put the enemy in his place because he has no authority in your life. And right now, as Pastor Jesse comes up, we don't want to take for granted that everyone here knows Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And I want Pastor Jesse, if you just would come up and just close us out. I love you guys. Thank you for being attentive. I appreciate it. Praise God. You can come across. Amen. Amen. Come on, you know the drill. Come on, let's come on. Mm. That was excellent. That was excellent. Amen. In Jesus' name. Sister, sister, I just um, bless you for allowing the Lord Jesus to use you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, the hell men of salvation. We want to just do that right now. We want to, from the message that the sister has brought forth, and uh, we just take that opportunity right now as a, as a, as a church, uh, followers of Christ. We're learners. We're growing. But we want you to be a part of what we're doing. If you have not received Christ, and maybe you were just contemplating it uh, by social media, uh, you're listening uh, in your home, your, your hospital, uh, in your bedroom, wherever it is, wherever it may be. You've been contemplating Christ. Someone has ministered to you. You've been thought about changing uh, your direction, your life. Um, but this is an opportunity for you. And as the word was spoke today, man shall not live by it bread alone. So she spoke the word. She allowed God to use her. And now here's your opportunity. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. Come on now, but have everlasting life. 
God sent not his son into the world to condemn, but that the world through him, through him, through his spoken word, might be saved. So right now, we want to give you an opportunity. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you're saved. Salvation has always been basic, simple, easy, elementary. It always, never been 40 steps here and 30 steps there. No, just basic, simple. So we want to give you this opportunity. If you just, uh, just think in your heart. And then we want, we're going to just say some things in here as a church. And then you can follow along with us and repeat this. And has it, because God, God deal with the heart. He, that's what the, that's where the belief come from. It should come from your heart. And everybody just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. And right now, today, I heard the message, and I desire to change. And I say to you, come into my heart, be my Savior and my Lord. I repent of all of my sin, and right now, I desire to live for you. Now, if you said that and, and that those words came from your heart, well, you're saved. Amen. Just that simple. Just that simple. Amen. I thought about many times with salvation, and I said in so many words about salvation, and I think about the two male factors on the cross. One rejected him, but one received him. And to think about it now, the one that received him, he, he, when you talk about salvation, salvation is simple, basic, easy, elementary. He never, see, he never, he never uh, 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 had a foot in church. He, he, he didn't go to church. He never been to church. The one that said, Jesus, if you receive me, receive me, I believe. Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. And think about it now. Think about it. I always say salvation is basic, simple, easy, elementary. Think about it. He never been baptized. But he, he said, today, oh, y'all don't hear me. He said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. So, amen. Such a good message today. Amen. So we're on this road of armor of God. And we know that in, in Ephesians, he's, he's speaking figuratively when he talk about the armor. But, um, you know, the armor, and then we started out with uh, standing with the loins girt about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we went through with faith, uh, the shield of faith. So next, next Sunday... We deal with, and, and, and then the helmet of salvation today. So the sword of the spirit now, which figuratively is talking about the word of God. Okay, the sword of the spirit, and then we'll do praying. So somebody going to, we got two more messages, I believe, uh, talking about the armor. Now, if, if, if you just been receiving all of the armor so far, these armor messages, come on, give the Lord a shout out. A shout out of praise. Amen. Amen. We should be better. Better now, right? Amen. Amen. We should be ready. We, 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 I'm, as a matter of fact, I hope you were ready before you got here today. But we got something to go on now for the rest of the week, right? Until next week come. But then, you know, many times, don't just wait the next week. Continue with the... Uh, the the the, uh, the the armor continue with the word of God prayer that's two that's things that's so important for your spiritual growth it's the word of God and prayer that's what it is and obedience is more than anything amen that's what God really honor amen so today um, I think you uh, are you gonna do Wednesday you do oh okay all right. Now, now I know. Now last Wednesday I didn't get a chance to do Wednesday. My wife and I we, we because I did Sun last Sunday and then Wednesday we do it. You do it a Sunday and Wednesday, 
but uh, we got so many couples. Uh, I'm, I'm just so thankful God is doing such a great thing. We got so many couples that we're working with, and uh, so I didn't get a chance to do Wednesday. And, uh, and in not many days to come, okay, we plan to go to Honduras. Okay, we got uh, a weekend we're going to do in Honduras. Uh, it's a, it's a, a pastoral marriage seminar. Okay, so that's the first of June. The first Sunday in June, we won't be here. Okay, so last year, you know, I went, and so she's going to go with me this time. <laughs> okay, now we can't speak Spanish, but we gonna have us <laughs> gonna have to have an interpreter. But all that is all set up. But like, we're just so grateful to be a part of the ministry as the ministry moving forward. And y'all gonna just pray for us, and we're gonna pray for you. Okay, do anything else, my sister? All right, God bless you. I think we're ready to close out. Would you stand, please? We want you to go, go in victory, go in obedience too. Amen. And and I'm telling you. If you, if you haven't got this love walk down, continue to work on that love walk. Work on that love walk. Work on that love walk, all right? All right, that's where Christ, if they're going to see Christ in your life, it's going to be through that love walk. Amen. Say, I came. I heard. I received. As a result, I'm so much better now than I was before I came in. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.